Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this multi-part series where I'm going to show you how to create your own cryptocurrency and build your own CO on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, in this video, we will conclude building our token sale contract. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, be sure to do that. Um, and you can also subscribe to the channel so that you can see the next videos in these series as they come out. And also make sure you turn on notifications with the bell below. And if the videos have already come out, you can go ahead and just check the link at the end of this video um, or just watch the next video in the playlist. So if you want to follow along with the code, you can uh, check out the GitHub link to the code in the description below. And you know, before we get rolling, let's also ensure that we have Ganache running. This is our you know, local blockchain. So we'll minimize that, clear everything out. And in the last video, we um, you know, worked on building out this token sale contract. And today we're gonna build out the last little bit of functionality, which is uh, ending the token sale. All right, I'm gonna give some space here. So that's what we said in our you know, kind of initial instructions. We uh, want to be able to end the sale. We've already uh, you know, provisioned some tokens to the contract. We've set a token price. Um, we've assigned an admin, and we've uh, added the ability to purchase some tokens in the sale. Now we're going to work on building the sale. Um, and you know we assigned an admin, so this is something we only want an admin to do. Um, so we can start working on that. We will sketch out our function. We'll say end sale. And this will be public because we want it to be uh, called externally. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys some more space. So we'll require, well, let's actually make some notes. We want to um, essentially require that only an admin can do this. Okay. Um, whenever we end the sale, we want to uh, basically transfer um, the amount of uh, tokens in the sale back to the admin. Remaining DAP tokens um, to admin. And lastly, we want to destroy this contract. So that whenever this is done, we want to actually remove this contract. So we can build out these three steps, uh, kind of one by one, with our tests. We'll just kill some of these files here. We'll go to the uh, token sale.js and add um, a new test. We'll say it ends token sale. Oops. And we'll do the same thing we've done in our other tests. Uh, you know, we'll assign a token instance or token sale instance. Oops, sorry. To the instance. And, um, you know, we'll get a copy of the, uh, well, actually, let's, let's do this like we did the other one. Let's do this. We'll start this way. We're actually going to keep a copy of DAP token, and we're going to keep a copy of the uh, token sale. So we've got both. And um, first, we want to try to end the token sale by someone other than the buyer. So let's say um, 
try to end sale from account other than the admin. Return token sale instance. Uh, end sale. You want to try to do it from someone who's not the admin. So let's say the buyer. All right. And whenever we do this, we want a failure to happen. We want to catch the error. And we want to assert that the error message. Uh, is uh, must be admin to end a sale. Oops. All right, we can run this test. See if you have any errors. All right, successful, so we expect an error. Um, let's actually try to code that in there. It's not 100% what's going on there. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's actually try to end it from the admin as well. We'll just test for both things uh, in each case. So say end sale as admin. Token sale instance. Um, uh, let's see, in sale. Let's say from admin. And uh, let's actually get a receipt here. So we can say then, this is a successful transaction. Um, receipt. And this will be. And we'll just uh, we'll just leave that there for now. We can check that receipt momentarily. So let's run this test. All right, so we've got a failure, which is what we expect. Now we want to actually implement this. So let's require that this is an admin. MSG. Sender, the person who's calling this function is the admin. And remember, we assigned the administrator when we uh, initialized this contract and we kept track of it here with this uh, public, or sorry, not public, this uh, state variable. So we'll require that's an admin and run our test again. Boom, it passes. All right, so we are doing this correctly. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, transfer, you know, any remaining DAP tokens to the admin when we end the sale. So remember, we provision some tokens to this token sale, and when we end it, if there's any remaining, we want to give them back to uh, the admin. So we can uh, check that that happened. We can return uh, the token instance. Let's say balance of admin and then function uh, balance we want to assert balance to number is equal to let's see 999,990 I believe that's the number of tokens you know minus the uh, token sold and let's just say it returns all unsold DAP tokens to admin. All right, let's run that test. It should fail. All right, so that's not true. Let's um, make it pass. We'll do that like this. That the token contract We'll actually transfer the tokens back to the admin. 
And we'll say token contract balance of this. We can in this line. So let's explain that. So we're taking the token contract like here, you know, we're calling the transfer function. And we are uh, transferring uh, to the admin, right? We're giving all the tokens to the admin and we get all the tokens by uh, checking the remaining balance of this smart contract. And remember in the last video, we used this to reference the smart contract address and we're just reading the balance out of uh, the token contract and transferring that total amount to the admin. So let's run the test and see if it passes. Boom, it passes. All right, so the last thing we want to do is actually destroy this contract whenever we end the token sale. This is pretty cool. Um, I'll show you what this does. This is uh, something in Solidity called self-destruct or suicide, depending on um, what you want to use. You can see we're at solidity.readthedocs.io. Um, and this is the documentation for uh, self-destruct. So self-destruct, it destroys the current contract, sending its funds to the given address. And that's going to be, you know, uh, that's going to be the amount in Ether. But we're just uh, transferring DAP tokens, which you already did. And it has an alias called Suicide. And you can also see the documentation on this, which we talked about a minute ago, the current contract explicitly convertible to an address. Um, so yeah, that gives you kind of an example of what we're doing here. We can test for, um, you know, the destruction of this contract uh, a couple ways. So whenever we call self-destruct, um, you know, it's going to disable this contract essentially, and it's going to... Uh, you know, return an ether that might be in this contract, which in this case is nothing, um, to the admin. But um, how do we test for this, right? Uh, so the contract code doesn't really get destroyed, right? Because the code in the blockchain is immutable. Uh, but it's really going to disable it. And it's going to clear out our state variables. So one thing that I'm going to do um, is just check for like one of these state variables and um, just kind of assume that it's going to be reset to, to a default value. So we initialized uh, the token price here um, when we you know, created this. And it should be set to the token price, which um, you know, is this big number that we set in our tests. So in order to you know, kind of ensure that our, our contract has been cleared out, uh, whenever self-destruct is called, this is going to get reinitialized to zero. So that's what I'll test for in the test suite. And there's a couple different ways you can do this, but that's uh, kind of just the basic way that I'll do it for now. So we can um, check that the uh, token price has been reset. Token price was reset when self-destruct was called. All right. Then function. Oops. Shirt equal. Um, let's see price. Okay. We'll run this test. All right, it failed. Oh, let's, let's say to number. All right, the token price is still there, so we need to actually uh, call self-destruct to destroy the contract. We'll do that like this. Self-destruct, oh, sorry. Self-destruct. Um, admin. We'll put it 
down here. Uh-oh, got a transaction. Um, let's try it again. All right, boom, it passes. So yeah, we have successfully ended the token sale. We made sure that the admin is the only one who can end it. We uh, transferred all the remaining DAP tokens back to the admin that were in the sale. And we you know, allowed uh, the admin to do that. And we disabled this contract whenever we ended the sale. So that's it, guys. That is our complete um, token sale contract. If you've made it to this point in the tutorial, congratulations. Um, that's going to complete the entire, you know, backend portion uh, of our decentralized application, our, our ICO website that allows you to, uh, you know, create your own cryptocurrency and sell it. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've had to develop this entire thing on the backend first, um, and I kind of explain why. In some of the other tutorials, you know, I did a little bit of uh, contract development and then switched to the client side and contract to client side, contract to client side, but that doesn't really work in this tutorial because we need uh, both of these smart contracts in order to even develop our client side uh, code because the main thing that we rely upon is this buy tokens function. Um, and we also, you know, uh, rely upon variables like token price, token sold, things like that. So, yeah, that concludes the uh, backend blockchain solidity side of our project. Um, let's go ahead and commit our changes. Got several things here. Let's see where we're at. Okay. We'll say um, for speed token sale. All right. So that's it, guys. That's the end of this video. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see the next video in the series when it comes out or just check the link at the end of this video if it's already out or watch the next video in the playlist. And next, we're going to start building out the client side application, the uh, token sale website where we can actually purchase these tokens. Um, and until then, thanks for watching DAP University. <laughs>